All right, welcome back to the third subsection of our uh, lecture on child pornography. And we're going to start by talking about a diagnosis of pedophilic disorder from the DSM-5. And this diagnosis is um, controversial among many groups for many different reasons. Uh, but we do need to talk about it uh, because it is an official diagnosis that can be given via a medical professional. Uh, and in order to be diagnosed with pedophilic disorder, you must meet three criteria. Um, the first is uh, arousing fantasies about uh, or urges for behaviors with a prepubescent child or children. Uh, you have to have actually acted on those desires or uh, experienced significant distress or difficulty as a result of those desires. And you have to be at least 16 years of age and at least five years older than the child that you're having these desires for. Uh, there are six subtypes uh, of which obviously there can be a little bit of overlap. Uh, there's the exclusive uh, pedophile, which is somebody who's only attracted to children. There's non-exclusive, which is uh, uh, offenders who are uh, attracted to both children and adults. Uh, there's attraction to boys, attraction to girls, or attraction to both. And then there's uh, the incest-only virgin version, which is the uh, type of person who is only attracted to uh, essentially people they are related to. And again, there's a lot of uh, controversy over this diagnosis. Um, many people feel it's uh, too specific or too broad or uh, doesn't uh, include the right kind of... Um, uh, criteria, uh, but it is uh, in the official DSM-5. So, other ways to kind of subdivide different types of people who are into uh, child sexual abuse are the hands-on or the hands-off. Now, uh, what this essentially means is hands-on are people who want to actually abuse children, Hands-off are those who only want to view child pornography of some kind and have no uh, desire or have not uh, ab actually abused any children in the, the physical way. Um, interestingly, research has showed that the hands-off uh, people, i.e. offenders who only view child pornography online, are no more likely to become an actual physical abuser uh, than anyone else. So the percentage of the hands-off abusers who later become actual hands-on physical abusers is roughly the same as the percentage of people who don't uh, consume child pornography who go on to physically abuse children. Um, the hands-off uh, child porn consumers are more likely than the hands-on physical abusers to be unemployed, young, single, white males. Uh, what that means uh, for our culture and our society is uh, kind of up for interpretation, I guess. Um, but uh, uh, there is a much, you know, much more of the hands-off child porn consumers uh, are those unemployed, young, single, white males. And both groups, hands-on and hands-off, are much, much, much more likely to report having been a victim of some kind of abuse when they were younger uh, than non-child uh, uh, porn or child abuse perpetrators. Uh, 97, a researcher named Durkin came up with this typology. Uh, and again, there's at least some room for overlap here. Um, uh, but people who... Uh, engage in child sexual abuse material. There's uh, traders who just kind of uh, consume, acquire uh, child sexual abuse material. Uh, the networkers are people who kind of engage with the subculture, engage with the community, uh, turn to the subculture for um, not only uh, child sexual abuse materials, but also uh, uh, community, um, conversation, uh, support, etc. There's the groomers who are the people who uh, kind of interact with children in an online capacity, 
in order to have them create child sexual abuse material. And then there's the travelers, those who actually go out seeking out physical interactions, physical contact, etc. Uh, and then uh, finally, there's Crone, uh, another researcher, and uh, they came out with their typology in 2004. And this subdivides it a lot more. I'm not going to go over each of these. Um, but it, in general, this is kind of um, in order of seriousness. Uh, there's the browser who creates, uh, uh, who, who isn't necessarily seeking out child sexual abuse material, but when they find it, they'll go ahead and save it. They'll go ahead and uh, use it. Uh, the private fantasy who creates their own material, but then kind of keeps it to themselves. Uh, the trawler who um, uh, goes out looking for it. Uh, Non-secure and secure collectors who, uh, you know, go out to find it, um, specifically searching for it. Uh, groomers who, again, kind of make contact with young people and um, uh, push them in a direction and mold them into a willing participant in creating child sexual abuse materials. Uh, physical abusers who actually perform, you know, meet up with uh, young people in real life to physically abuse them. And then producers and distributors who are the ones that are mostly responsible for creating, like specifically intending to go out and create child sexual abuse material uh, and then um, put it onto the internet for wider consumption. So again, this is in general kind of from what we most would consider least serious to most serious. Uh, there is a lot of overlap. People can move from one to the other over time, uh, but they are all um, illegal in the vast majority of jurisdictions. All right, that's all we've got for this section. Again, I know this was a rough one. I know this was a, is a very difficult subject to discuss, very difficult subject to learn about. If you've made it this far, thank you. Um, I hope it hasn't been too um, disturbing or traumatic. Uh, but I promise that the future sections in this course uh, will be uh, easier to learn about, easier to consume. Uh, but again, I think child porn and child sexual abuse is a very important topic. Uh, it's something we should all know about, whether we have children or not, um, because hopefully we're all concerned about the children in our lives and in our community. Uh, and in the world and want to make sure that they're safe and comfortable and loved and uh, not being abused, not being taken advantage of. So once again, thank you for watching.